How to read people's mind. The great Buddha once said, the mind is everything. What you think you become. In a small village nestled between the whispering forests and the serene mountains, there lived a young monk named Liang. He was a devoted follower of Zen Buddhism, seeking enlightenment through meditation and the teachings of his wise master, Zhen. Liang's journey was not merely one of quiet contemplation, but of a profound quest to understand the human mind. He had always been fascinated by the idea that one could read the thoughts and feelings of others, not for mere curiosity, but to deepen his empathy and connection with all beings. One day, as the cherry blossoms began to fall like a delicate pink snow, Master Zen called Liang to his side. Liang, he said, his voice as calm as the still pond, you have been a diligent student, but to truly understand the mind, you must go beyond these temple walls. You must learn from the greatest teacher of all, life itself. With his master's blessing, Liang set out on a journey that would take him across lands far and wide. His first encounter was with an old tea seller whose eyes held the wisdom of many years. The tea seller spoke of the art of listening, not just to words, but to the silence between them, to the heartbeat of the world. As Liang continued his travels, he met a myriad of people, each with their own stories etched into their faces. There was the joyful laughter of children playing in the fields, the sorrowful gaze of a widow as she watched the sunset, and the furrowed brow of a farmer worried about the coming storm. With each encounter, Liang practiced the art of mindful presence, giving his full attention to the person before him. He began to notice the subtle shifts in their expressions, the unspoken words hanging in the air, and the emotions that danced in their eyes. Months passed, and Liang's understanding grew. He learned that to read someone's mind was not a matter of intrusion, but of openness. It was not about extracting secrets, but about offering a space where unguarded thoughts could be shared. And so Liang transformed from a curious monk into a compassionate sage, whose insight into the human mind brings comfort and understanding to those he met. But this was only the beginning, for the true depth of the mind is an ocean without end, and Liang had only just set sail upon its vast expanse. Liang's journey took him to the bustling heart of the city, where the cacophony of life was overwhelming. Here he found minds cluttered with thoughts of commerce, love, and survival. Amidst the chaos, Liang sought the quiet corners where he could observe the play of minds like a lotus floating above murky waters. In a dimly lit alley, he encountered a street performer, a young girl with eyes that mirrored the sky at dusk. She danced with a grace that belied her years, telling stories with her movements that words could never capture. Liang watched, entranced, as the crowd's emotions shifted with her dance. Joy, sorrow, and wonder flowed through them as if she was the conductor of their hearts. The girl noticed Liang's attentive gaze and approached him after her performance. You watch not just with your eyes, but with your soul, she said. Liang smiled, recognizing a kindred spirit. They spoke of life and art, and the girl shared her secret. To touch people's hearts, you must let your own be touched. To read their minds, you must open yours. Liang pondered her words as he continued his travels. He met scholars and fools, merchants and beggars, each a unique verse in the poem of humanity. He listened to their stories, their hopes, and their fears, realizing that the mind was a reflection of the world it inhabited. One evening, as the amber glow of sunset bathed the land, Liang sat with an old fisherman by the river. The fisherman spoke of the river's currents, how they ebbed and flowed, much like the thoughts in one's mind. To understand the river, you must let it flow through you, he said, casting his net with a practiced hand. Liang meditated on these words, and as the days turned to weeks, he learned to let the currents of thought flow through him without resistance. He became a vessel for the silent words of others, a bridge between the spoken and the unspoken. As Liang's understanding deepened, so too did his ability to connect with others. He found that he could sense the undercurrents of their thoughts, the ripples of their emotions. 
he became a beacon of empathy, guiding those lost in the tumult of their own minds toward a haven of understanding. Liang learns the delicate balance between observing and participating, between knowing and understanding. The final part of his journey awaits, where the culmination of his experiences will reveal the true essence of reading minds. As the seasons changed, Liang found himself in the northern reaches of the land, where the mountains touched the heavens and the air was crisp with the scent of pine. Here, he sought the solitude of the ancient temples, places where the veil between the physical and spiritual worlds was thin. In the quietude of these sacred spaces, Liang meditated deeply, reaching into the depths of his own mind. He discovered that the key to reading others' minds was not in the words they spoke, but in the space between thoughts, the silence that held the truth of their being. One day, as he sat in meditation, a troubled monk approached him. Brother Liang, he said, my mind is a storm, and I cannot find peace. Leon looked into the monk's eyes and saw the turmoil within. He did not speak but simply held the monk's gaze, offering a silent sanctuary for his thoughts. As minutes turned to hours, the monk's storm subsided and calmness settled over him. How did you do that? He asked in awe. Liang replied, I did nothing but be present with you. Your own mind found the way to stillness. This experience was a revelation to Liang. He realized that the greatest gift he could offer was not to read minds, but to understand them, to be a mirror in which others could see their true selves reflected. Liang returned to his village, no longer the young monk who had set out on a quest, but a wise sage who had found the essence of Zen. He taught others not how to read minds, but how to listen to them, how to be fully present with another person, and in doing so, help them uncover their own wisdom. The great Buddha was right. Liang would say, the mind is everything, but it is in the stillness that we find our true selves, and in understanding, we find connection with all things. And so, Liang's journey came to an end, not with grand revelations or mystical powers, but with the simple, profound understanding of the human mind. His story, a testament to the Zen saying, to know oneself is to know all continues to inspire those who seek to connect with the world around them. This concludes the tale of Lang, a story of discovery, empathy, and the boundless depths of the mind. May it serve as a reminder that the greatest journey is not outward, but inward, into the vast landscape of our own consciousness. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share with friends, and join Wisdom Quest for more inspiring stories and wisdom. Comment your thoughts below.